only healing that God has for you is for you, Abba Your blood layers, your bloodline totally living for God. Yes, that is your portion. What God has for you is for you, Abba
things in your own strength. And it has added sorrow, a great sorrow over your life right now. I break every soul tie with sorrow. I break every soul tie with cordiality and worldliness. I break every soul tie with doing it your way. I'm a liar. And I shift you into the storehouse. Or the Tobiah. Or the blessings of the Lord. Waking you rich. Or the it had no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord strengthen you. It shifts you to a place of gladness. It has no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord comes with no payment. But Jesus has already paid it all for you. The blessings of the Lord are amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. I'm coming with blessings. I'm coming with provision. I'm coming with 
with you looking oh come on here for the provision of you come on fill up fill up fill up oh, come on, we feel this new day oh, come on, with storehouses we feel next month with storehouses we feel oh, come on, come on, September October November December with storehouses oh, come on, we feel oh, come on, January oh, come on, 2024 with storehouses we feel oh, come on, January
the enemy. I am whining loose. Whining loose. We rise up in fierceness right now.
blessing your God for what he is doing. He's doing a great work in you, through you, around you. Yes, rejoice. Oh, rejoice. Oh, yananaya. Rejoice. Oh, yananaya. Oh, rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice. Ah, uh, thank you, God. 
we bless you lord jesus yes for the storehouses we bless you for what you're doing we bless you for victory lord god victory lord god that even as the devil was petty today lord god we win we win we win lord jesus yes lord lord jesus we we receive that truth we win we win we win lord god you're doing a great work in and among us lord god and we rejoice in it lord god we say it's grand we say it's awesome we say it's wonderful lord god we say it's mighty yes lord god we thank you for where you have shifted us into lord god yes yes lord god we say we will go from level to level and glory to glory lord god uh, yes 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 uh in this great dimension lord god we thank you for the joseph coat of many colors today that you have bestowed upon us lord jesus christ yes lord god we take our governmental rank uh as gatekeepers lord god answers keys lord god we thank you for the generational mantles uh lord god yes yes lord god thank you god thank you jesus yes we thank you that we cannot be denied that we're unstoppable we're unstoppable yes we're unstoppable yes lord god we cannot be muted we cannot be silenced we cannot be be disrupted we cannot be interrupted lord jesus christ we thank you that that truth is evident in and around us lord god with the soundness of your sovereignty that we have experienced today the transformation that is evident that we have experienced today lord jesus yes 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 lord god we thank you that the gates of hell uh have not prevailed and we thank you for the limitless lord god immeasurable lord god testimonies that will come forth from what you allowed us to do today as a mighty army lord jesus christ yes Hallelujah. hallelujah lord god thank you jesus thank you jesus yes thank you jesus Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Just take some deep breaths and receive. Hallelujah. Rest in what God is doing. Let your spirit man catch up with what God is doing. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Yes, kiss your glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, just keep receiving. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The word that the Lord had given me was that it's so important that we fall out of agreement with false obligations in this season and in this hour. The dictionary defines false as not true or correct, erroneous, declaring to be untrue or not faithful, not loyal, treacherous, deceiving, misleading, deceptive, not genuine. Okay, based on mistake or on uh, or inconsistent impressions, ideas, and facts, used as a substitute or supplement, especially temporarily. And the word obligations in the dictionary is defined as to require or constrain, as by law, to command or force by necessity. It means to bind morally or legally as a promise or contract, to place under a debt of gratitude for some benefit, favor, or service. It also means to be bonded, noted, billed, given some type of uh, bill or certificate that demonstrates that you are indebted to something. In Galatians 6 and 2, it says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That word bear in the Greek means to lift up, to endure, to declare, to sustain, to receive. It means to carry or take up, uh, to put oneself up or to carry to bear what is burdensome, to support, to sustain. So the Bible is telling us that as we bear one another's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ because Galatians 6 and 2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. God's law is his word, his standards, and his principles. God's law does not entail what others think, feel, believe, or want. And this is so key even to the prayers that we just prayed and how God armed us with the Joseph mantle. Uh, And Joseph was not, uh, Joseph had to get to a place where he was not focused on what his brothers thought, what others thought, and what was happening to him, he had to focus on what God had shown him, what he had dreamed, what what God had said about him. And so God's law encompasses what he says in his word, what he says to you personally. So even as he would begin to speak to you about uh, the revelations of uh, the prayers that were prayed today, Okay, he is going to begin to reveal to you what is appropriate, what is acceptable, what is lawful. Okay, your obligation is to him, it's not to family members, it's not to uh, friends, it's not to the world, the world system. And if the law goes against God's word, then we should not do what it expects us to do. Okay, if other people's voices is contrary to God's word, then we should not align with that. And that even goes along with family members. And we have been endeavoring to uh, gut up faulty foundations. Uh, The Lord is saying that we have to come out of agreement with false obligations and false loyalties in our family line. And that as we come out of these false loyalties, false obligations, we will uh, begin to even see a greater aligning of our generational line unto him. Okay, so when we bear one another up, it should not bind us. 
It should not trap us, dismantle us. It, we should not be controlled or dominated, intimidated or manipulated. So when you think about some of the false obligations that you have with family members or with friends or, or people that God is telling you, you, you shouldn't be following their voice. You should be listening to my voice. Uh, or what have you. Uh, how are these things trapping you? How are they binding you? How are they putting you in a pit? How are they putting you in prison? Okay. When we bear one another up, it should not cause us or others to be contrary to God's word or his purpose. It should not put us under duress or arrest. Okay. Where we feel obligated to do something that uh, God is not telling us to do or we don't want to do. It should not incite uh, enablement, okay, or um, where we're being forced or taken advantage of or we feel tormented in a desire or at just a, a pressure to do something that defies the law of Christ. And remember the law of Christ is his word, his will, his purpose, his standard. Okay. And what he says. Okay. So, um, if we're honest with ourselves, there is a torment that accompanies false obligation. So think about what's going on in your life. Do you feel tormented by the false obligations, uh, that you, uh, are bind, uh, bound to because your true identity knows that this is not of God. Your true identity knows that you are being taken advantage of by that loved one, um, that you're not being true to yourself, that you're doing it uh, because of a false obligation and loyalty and not because you want to do it or because it's the will of God for you. Okay, Romans 13 and 8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. The Good News Bible of Romans 13 and 8 says, Put under obligation to no one. It says, Be under obligation to no one. My apologies. Be under a God, a obligation to no one. The only obligation you have is to love one another. Whoever does this has obeyed the law. I'm going to read the Amplified uh, Bible in Romans 13 and 8. It says, keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to love one another. For he that loves his neighbor who practices loving others has fulfilled the law. So we've been talking about love over the last week or couple of weeks, okay? I'll, I'll start uh, the Amplified Bible again, Romans 13 and 8. Keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to love one another. For he that loves his neighbor who practices loving others has fulfilled the law. Relating to one's fellow man, meeting all its requirements. So the only debt we should have is the debt of love. Even then, this is according to the law of Christ. A lot of what we do in the name of love is not of God. Many of our choices and actions are not his law. They're not his will. They're not his purpose. I'll say that again. Many of our choices and actions are not God's law, not his will, and not his purpose. Now, obligation is at the top of the list. Obligation is not a fruit of the spirit, nor is it a characteristic of love. Okay, so nowhere in the fruits uh, of this, the fruit of the spirit that um, is uh, listed in Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says obligation. The fruit of obligation is not in there. 
in first corinthians 13 4 through 8 where it uh reveals the characteristics of love there is nothing in there saying you should be obligated and so as you rise up as joseph you have to come out of these false charges and false obligations brings these two charges one that is not ours to bear but we incur the charge when we operate in false obligation. And the other one is false indebtedness, but we incur the charge when we operate in false obligation. Such unnecessary and unjust charges cause undue burdens, drama, grief, loss, psychological confusion, bindings, trials, tribulations, unnecessary persecutions, hardships, and spiritual warfare, okay? And so God is saying in this new place, he is uh, requiring us to love and that be the only debt that we have. And that all of these other false obligations that we have taken on that are stressing us, burdening, burdening us, that we are praying every day day in this room to break free from and then we walk out of the prayers as and we walk into obligation and we, we we take back up what we just cast out we take back up what we just broke free from he's saying you can't do that in this new season you can't have false loyalties because you don't want mama to be upset with you, daddy to be upset with you, this person not to like you, this person to leave you. Your debt is to love only, but not to be uh, obligated where you're doing things outside of his will and purpose to please man, especially your family. Because if you're going to bring the family into alignment with him, you got to come out of the agreements that keeps the family bound to unhealthy interactions, unhealthy foundations, unhealthy cycles and patterns, unhealthy drama, pain, hurt, and all of these things, these charges that comes with false obligation and false loyalty. And so one of the things that God says that when we start operating in uh, false obligations and we're seeking to bear people up, we're really doing it because it's our choice. We're choosing to do it. We're, we're choosing to allow people to use us, abuse us, control us, manipulate us, take advantage of us. You also might be a fixer and you need to be delivered from the spirit of the fixer where you need to be needed. You need to fix people and things. You need to be validated by what you do. You're playing God in people's lives where instead of allowing him to be God in their lives. Uh, or you have a spirit of fear, fear of letting go of people, fear of letting people down, fear of being ridiculed, fear of confrontation, fear of what that person is going to say, uh, fear of how you're going to have to experience even a grief and loss from not being the fixer anymore, uh, how you're going to uh, feel um, uh, because you're not being validated by what you do for somebody anymore. Those fears you have to let go of. Or there may be a soul tie. You have an ungodly soul tie with that person or that thing that you're obligated to. And you need to break that soul tie. Um, or there could be some demonic oppression there uh, where you're a stronghold to demonic spirits and powers that cause you to operate uh, through a spirit of obligation and false loyalty. You can also be bound by systems. You could be imprisoned by worldly systems, cultural systems, so ethnic systems. So uh, there are times where, uh, you know, there are certain uh, culture mindsets or rules and regulations, uh, uh, traditions that are uh, tied to our ethnicity uh, that, that are required of us. But God is saying he did not birth you 
into the earth um, to be guided by your ethnicity or, or the traditions of man or the traditions that have been put on you because of your ethnicity. He, he made you that ethnicity in his likeness, but he, he, his, his will and purpose is for you to follow his law, his standard, his purpose, not, not the traditions of, of, well, my family always do this, or this is what is required of me because I'm African. This is what is required of me because I am such and such, or what have you. God is saying you have to come out of agreement with that. Uh, one of the things that God was showing me is how this ties us to a lot of ancestral spirits, spirit guides, uh, witchcraft altars, idolatrous altars and systems. Uh, and so uh, as we will break these false loyalties, we will uh, further come out of these faulty foundations um, where these things have nothing to do with God. They have nothing to do with, with him. They are things that man have made up based on their own culture, their own ethnicity, uh, their own uh, uh, things that they have put in place um, uh, for whatever reason that they decide to do it. Uh, but God says in this new season, righteousness has to be your standard and, and what he is saying. And so... Um, that is the word that God uh, gave me for today. And um, uh, all of these charges, they are just contrary to his law. All of these charges, they keep us from flourishing in the fruit of God, his true love, his true blessings, covenant and purpose. And so even as you would come back and listen to the replay, you want to search out what false obligations you have, false loyalties. How would they hinder you from being the true Joseph that God is requiring you to be in this season and this hour? And uh, I yield uh, my mic. I'm not sure if anyone have any thoughts or questions uh, before we pray into the word. Blessings to you, Apostle, and uh, good morning and good evening to everyone in the room. Um, what you just shared today really highlights the the seriousness of our our calling unto the Lord, and um, it really highlights the seriousness of our calling unto the Lord and how He really wants us to be totally be committed to him and make him a priority in our lives. Um, because yes, many times we get into the motion of doing what is required of him um, as an event, as um, th this part of life. And then we go into another part of our lives. But our our commitment unto the Lord is our entire life and it must be embraced as our entire life. There's no different praise when she's in the prayer room and a different praise when I'm with my family members and a different praise when I'm with my friends because sometimes we compartmentalize our lives like that. Um, and then when a Christian sister sees you somewhere, say, no, 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 I'm with my family. And oh, no, no, I'm with my friends, you know. Um, and th there mustn't be a multiple personality in our um, in our lives, really. I mean, when, when you look at mental health, when you talk about, you know, or, or mental illness, you talk about multiple personality, it's really an unwell personality. It's an unwell combination of someone that exists. And what God is really expecting us to do is to be the same. And so 
when you were sharing that, it reminds me when when Jesus was called out and um, he was told that his his family was outside. Um, I had to look at the reference of that, and that's from Matthew chapter twelve, verse forty six to forty nine. While Jesus was still um, talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother, and and you know, I I love the Bible because there is no um, mistake of words. His mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then he said to him, look, um, they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, who is my mother and who is my brother? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, here are my mother and my brothers. These are my family. These are my family. Um, someone who would have thought that's very disrespectful, you know, Jesus. I mean, he broke a lot of. It was a shook tables. He broke a lot of a lot of. Um, 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 what was it? Traditional, traditional things. Um, but he mentioned, and what would have been offended. But his will, he says, my my will or my meat or my food is to do the will of my father. He he did not lose focus on his assignment. He did not lose focus on his identity of who he really was. And 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 that's really what the Lord is presenting to us because that's his expectation. That's his expectation. There is no mix of words with Christ. There's no mix of words with God. Um some people might not understand. Um but it doesn't mean that he would not state his expectation from us. It doesn't mean that. And, um, you know, there's another scripture, another reference that says, uh, when Jesus was saying that we have made the traditions of men, um, um, the traditions of men have made the word of God of none effect because we've held into tradition like this is life. You know, it's, it's more important than, than what the word of God says. And we find that a lot in our lives and it's not honoring to the Lord because he wants it to be the other way around. The word of God must must be put above traditions and culture and and really you know you said something that was so profound. It keeps us so when we are breaking altars we are forgetting the spiritual impact that it has when we pay obeisance to these traditions and culture, we, we we don't realize this, and you are and you are and you're breaking covenants, and we're and we're breaking, falling out of agreement. But yet we are holding on to things, and so the enemy is saying, "But you're still in my camp. You're still with me. You're still agreeing to things that I, you know, <laughs> that the family has agreed to. So you are still in our camp, um, and we must really reflect." really reflect i i remember a particular brother um who he he because because he even came from another um, um religion his entire family rejected him they rejected him because he had given his life to the lord and he remained he remained in that on 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 the course you know um i know he's somewhere in the states but that was his testimony. And he can get to a point where your family can disown you. But it is the life that we have been called to. And I, I pray that as, as the Lord has spoken today, we would reflect. Who is my, who am I placing as a priority in my life? Who am I placing as a priority in my decisions, in, in, in the choices I make? Am I giving God the first choice? Or am I given culture the first choice or my given tradition the first choice or my pleasing people or my really and truly pleasing the Lord and um, that's the reflection and that's the really importance of, of what you shared today and I just wanted to just add that blessings to you last thing apostle um I was led to a scripture in, let's see, Colossians 2, um, 
starting at verse 13. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. So as we would consider taking on false obligations, essentially what we're doing is upholding a false belief that we owe somebody something. And it's a debt that we place upon ourselves, usually at the expense of our own peace, at the expense of our own self-care, which sometimes we may not even recognize or know this. But this scripture here in Colossians 2, 13 through 14, through 15 that I read what Jesus Christ literally did was cancel the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands then he set aside nailing it to the cross so there is no debt that we should be carrying from the time of our salvation until the time that Jesus comes he canceled the record of debt with all its legal demands. So there is no legal right or jurisdiction that anyone has in our families or our friends, whatever relationship it may be, to bind us to a debt through false obligation. And I hear the Lord saying to not pick up any debts that I have delivered you from. I've delivered you from every debt that you could possibly ever carry and that you could possibly ever owe. So don't pick up any debts that are not yours, that is not your burden or your obligation to carry. And also here, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So in every area of our life, whether it's our families, our personal relationships, friendships, covenant relationships, we should be operating through freedom, through love, through choice, not through debt or false belief that we owe somebody something. That's what I wanted to share. I you? Wow. Most powerful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And we must be careful not to be, or while we pray, to break every demonic entanglement and manipulation of our minds, because the enemy takes advantage of that. Make people feel bad, make people feel guilty, make people feel that, you know, there there is... They, they can't they can't be free they can't walk in freedom um, I believe we also need to pray into that to break every demonic entanglement and any guilt any manipulation of our minds in Jesus name yes that's excellent yes just take a moment to receive and then we'll let other share just want to receive what Apostle Praise has said and what Apostle Nina has said anyone else want to share Apostle I have something to share Okay, go ahead. Um, so as we were 
um, as we were praying, the Lord was giving me a word of knowledge and uh, was showing me um, that he was healing someone's body in the room. Um, I just kept seeing them in the spirit and how uh, the Lord has been uh, pushing them to go forth, especially in ministry and things. Um, but there's been a level of weariness in their body. Um, but even as we were um, just shifting um, through the realms in the spirit, um, God was causing uh, healing and miracles to come upon them um, instantly and healing their body. So whoever that is for, um, I'm just decreeing and declaring healing to them even now, that even as they uh, would come into being a storehouse governor, that God will continue to break any weariness and um, God will expand them beyond their capacity. Um, the Lord was also just sharing with me that there is a level of acceleration that has been placed upon each and every person um, in this room today, that um, that things that would have taken taken years, months, weeks, even days, uh, will will happen uh, from an accelerated place where God is going to uh, cause uh, promises to come forth like never before. I was seeing, um, I kept seeing the word forbearance, and I kept seeing where the enemy has been. Uh, 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 coming against people's faith where it causes the promises uh, that are due to their name to almost be in like a forbearance uh, type place. But God was going to accelerate things and break things like never before and, and cause them to uh, uh, truly receive the things that that's past due and things that should have already come forth. And God was also showing me a fresh oil that is being released, a fresh oil um, uh, that shall come upon uh, different people like never before. I kept seeing um, even uh, in this uh, uh vision that God was showing me, I was seeing people, uh, you know, pressing forward uh, and no longer being weary. So I was seeing how God was pouring a fresh oil up on their their head and it was just uh, just flowing down to their feet and God was causing uh, just weariness just to be broken and causing new strength just to come upon people uh, like never before and um, the Lord was just showing me Philippians 419 that says but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the Lord was just showing me that even as we will continue to activate the things on tonight, that it's very important to know the keys that he's given you when it comes to the storehouses. So with each and every storehouse that God has released to each and every person, um, it will be very important for you to continue to stand in the storehouse, to live in that place and not come down from this place for there will be rivers that shall flow um, like never before in this season, um, in this time and in this shift that will uh, literally cause the supplication of the Lord to come upon each and every place where God is supplying all of your needs and it's going to uh, overflow. So it's not going to be something that's going to come in, uh, you know, in in little, um, you know, little droplets, but it's going to be an overflow um, that's going that uh, that's going to come upon each and every person. And um, I also wanted to share that um, the Lord was just showing me that the goodness, uh, so the goodness of God is coming upon everyone like a mantle and wrapping itself around this season as you will continue to stand as a storehouse uh, governor. And um, I just wanted to read Psalms 34, A, O, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusts that trust in him. Um, so I just wanted to release that. And there is definitely a watering that God is just releasing even now where dams are being broken. And uh, I even see walls breaking down that even the walls of Jericho around uh, different seasons and in, uh, in different people's lives are just going to come down. And even as you uh, go about your day today, um, you're going to feel a, uh, a new about your
yourself a newness about the day, a newness about this month, a newness about this year that will be, uh, you won't be able to fathom, but that is the goodness of the Lord that God is releasing in this time. So I just wanted to share that and I yield my mic. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. As you were talking, I saw how uh, some people would come out of the false obligations that fresh oil was coming up on them and there was just a literal newness uh, coming where you were afflicted in your body and uh, uh, just even uh, weights around your shoulders and your neck uh, was uh, just uh, falling off and there was just a, a new strength coming up on you and just even healing in some areas where um, um, you have not even understood why you have pain there, why you have sickness or affliction there, but those false burdens uh, was uh, as you came out of agreement with, agreement with them, you were going to be delivered and healed uh, and have noticeable uh, just wellness and uh, fresh oil in your body. So thank you, uh, Renita. Thank you. Anyone else? Blessings, Apostle. I have something. Go ahead. Um, I kept hearing God say uh, to tell them, do not let the enemy take back up the ground um, from where we went in the spirit and where we treaded and the things that he have given to us. Um, I sense that the enemy is trying to come for it like um, Pastor Praise stated that we should be praying for the mind tangling and um, the different ways that he'll try to come and snatch it. Um, I, I just sense a succumbing to the enemy's tactics and him trying to take back up that ground. Uh, but God is saying, do not let the enemy take back up the ground. What he given you from the storehouses to the mantles, to the, the new, the new thing that he has been speaking for you in this season is yours. And you have to align with that truth and come into the truth. So do not let the enemy take back up the ground. And that's all I give my mind. Thank you, Carenza. Anyone else? Well, um, is it okay if I uh, pray Apostle Praise and just into the Word? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done here today, Lord God. We thank you, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, where you have shifted us, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we will not go back, uh, uh, Lord God. We thank you that old things are passed away and all things have become new, Lord God. We reject the entanglements of uh, double-mindedness, Lord God, of confusion, Lord Jesus Christ. We reject the lies that we cannot say no. No, Lord God, that that we cannot uh, speak truth to people and tell them, uh, Lord God, uh, 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 no, Lord God, or. Uh, tell them that we can't fix it, Lord God. Uh, uh, we reject every lie, uh, Lord God, and every fear of coming out of false obligations and false loyalties, Lord Jesus Christ. And we shift further and greater into, Lord God, unmovable alignment with you, Lord God. We say we will not be moved. None of these things move us, Lord Jesus Christ, but it is our meat to please you. It is our heart desire to please you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, Lord God. And so we become sound in that truth right now. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, yes, Lord God, every debt, uh, uh, Lord God, of uh, that we are carrying through 
false obligation and false loyalty, uh, Lord God. Uh, yes, we decree a blood washing today, Lord God. We apply your blood, uh, Lord God, and we say your blood is washing us, Lord God. You've already pay the cost for us, Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. So we will not pick up debts, Lord God, that you have already paid, Lord God. And we we cast down debts, Lord God, that are uh, not ours, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, thank you, God. We command even the burdens of these debts to come from our, around our shoulders, in and around our necks, uh, come off of our backs. Uh, uh, Lord God. Anyway, they're causing affliction in our bodies. Uh, we release your fire to burn them up right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say what you have for us is for us, uh, Lord God. And as we will stand in the righteous agenda of your law, Lord God, your will, your purpose, uh, Lord God. Yes, uh, yes, Lord God. What you say, what you desire, we follow that uh, uh, Lord God, we say your words, your law, your purpose, uh, Lord God. Yes, your direction is the center, Lord God, and head of our lives, uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And so we even break uh, covenants, uh, Lord God, and soul ties to the fixer, Lord God, to being uh, uh, the fixer, the enabler, Lord God. We break soul ties, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, to cultural systems, Lord God, and systems that have imprisoned us through the world, Lord God, through family, through ethnicity, through relationships, even through religion, uh, Lord God, traditions, Lord God, and any self-inflicted systems that we have uh uh, come into agreement with that have us bound to false obligations, Lord God. We renounce them today. We break the covenants and dedications of them today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, even as you are giving us your mind at a greater measure, uh, Lord God, uh, we renounce fear of letting people down. We renounce fear, Lord God, of being ridiculed, Lord God, or standing up for ourselves, uh, uh, Lord God. Yes, 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 Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we renounce fear of being ostracized or cut off from relationships, even family relationships, Lord God. And, uh, yes, we renounce the fear of that in every way that it would try to keep us bound into false loyalties and false obligations. Uh, we cancel its power on our lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree you have not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. We apply the helmet of salvation, Lord God, and we say it's breaking our mind binding mind blinding Lord Jesus Christ yes it's nullifying all psychological warfare of confusion Lord Jesus Christ and bewitchment Lord God that will further keep us bound and tied uh, to uh, false uh, obligations and untruths Lord God that I will have us entangled and snared in false obligations Lord God we burn those entanglements and, and snares we burn the weapons of them by fire right now Lord God in the name of Jesus Christ. If we have any spirits, uh, Lord God, of obligation working on the inside of us, uh, Lord God, uh, we bind them with feathers and chains and we cast them out right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, we operate in any Jezebelic or Ahab, uh, uh, Lord God, spirits or tendencies, we bind and cast uh, those spirits out of us today, Lord God. We give up uh, our need to control our own lives, to control the lives of others. Uh, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we give up every uh, Jezebelic and Ahab, uh, Lord God, tying and knitting and operation, uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We renounce manipulation, seduction, Lord God, uh, taking advantage of others or being taken advantage of, uh, uh, Lord God. Yes, we renounce it right now, uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, and we come out of agreement with false obligations and false loyalties, Lord God, uh, that keeps your blessings from reigning and ruling in our personal lives and our generational lives, Lord God. Well, uh, yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the work that you have done here today, 
uh, Lord God, and we will not relinquish our coats. Uh, we will not relinquish our mantles, but we rise up as the Josephs, uh, Lord God, that you have destined us to be, Lord God, yes, and embodied us to be today, Lord God, and we take our righteous, rightful place of inheritance as governors of your storehouse, uh, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, yes, uh, yes, and we say that we only have one debt, and that is indebted to love like you love, Lord God. We will love like you, Lord Jesus Christ. We will govern the storehouses like you, Lord Jesus Christ, through your love, Lord God. Yes, 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 yes. We will be Joseph, uh, Lord God, of our spheres and regions, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, yes. But what we do will not be out of obligation. It will be through the leading of you. And so we thank you for even the greater dimension of embodiment, uh, uh, Lord God, that you have uh, filled us up with today, Lord God. And we say it's your voice, uh, uh, Lord God, that will guide us into truth, uh, Lord God. Guide us, uh, Lord God, as we are gatekeeping governors uh, uh, for such a time as this, uh, as we carry the uh, um the supernatural currency of heaven, uh, Lord God, to those around us, Lord God. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. And we say we are only obligated to you, Lord God. We're only obligated to you. We heal in that truth, Lord God. We declare our deliverance and freedom in that truth. And we thank you for the prophetic word and word of knowledge that has come forth through those who have spoken today, uh, Lord God. And, and we, we, uh, we agree with what you are speaking and we thank you, uh, Lord God, for how the new, uh, Lord God, is going to unfold in our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that people are, are going to have testimonies of how, Lord God, they had dreams and visions of the storehouse and and uh, Lord Jesus Christ and and uh, for the strategies, the plans, uh, the goals that you're going to give them or how to uh, navigate, uh, Lord God, what you are governing to their hands, Lord God, as the, the storehouses shift from heaven to earth, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you for speaking to your army. Thank you for speaking, Lord God. Uh, yes, to your chosen, Joseph, Lord God. Thank you for the dreams. Thank you for the visions. Thank you for the supernatural downloads of revelation, Lord God. Thank you for the strategies, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the alignment, Lord God, and the wisdom to remain aligned in you personally and generationally until Jesus comes. We just seal this prayer declaring that it is so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I yield. Amen. 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 Amen.
Liebe Mutter, Jesus, wie ihr seht, I belong to you.